When you take the time to ask yourself what churchgoers get out of going to church, the arrogance of their fight against COVID restrictions somehow becomes even more glaringly appalling. And, and I know you might be thinking to yourself, Noah, how could indiscriminately killing your own community with a special focus on your family and friends so that you can pretend you're immortal possibly be more arrogant? And congratulations, that's exactly the, the correct question to ask. But when you start digging a little deeper into their motivations, against all odds, they manage to make it worse. All right, so first of all, we need to set aside what the church gets out of fighting the COVID restrictions. Right? That, that's money. And you know, selling the safety and longevity of your friends and your family is already plenty fucked up. But for the purposes of this diatribe, let's also set aside the explicit threats and bullshit that church leaders offer up to fill up the pews, right? Forget for a second about the threats of hell and the promises of divine protection and all of that shit. And just now ask yourself what you have left over. What other motivation do churchgoers have for going to church? Okay, social pressure, right. Okay, set, set that one aside too. That's actually just a a preacher redirecting his job onto the laity. So it's kind of an extension of one of the things we already excluded. And now ask yourself, what's left over? If you still haven't landed on the answer I'm looking for, let me phrase it a slightly different way. When a newly minted atheist leaves their religion, what do they usually miss about it most and longest? Obviously, I'm talking about the community. I mean, that, that, that feeling like you and your loved ones don't die is probably right up there too. But for most Christians, or at least most modern day American Christians, that's something that's always been laid in doubt anyway. And, and, and certainly so for the ones that eventually break out of their faith altogether. Generally speaking, that feeling starts to fade way before you go full blown atheist. But the community, that was actually real. Hell, it's the only thing about the religion that was real other than the buildings. And it's the only thing that you actually lose when you leave a religion. Now, for those of us who never belong to a church, it's easy to overlook the importance of this. After all, everybody has a community, right? I mean, ex-religious people are sometimes put in the awkward position of rebuilding one from scratch in their adulthood. That's a task that no doubt ranges from difficult to impossible, but most people have had to more or less rebuild their community here and there, right? Like, like any time that you move to a new place, you kind of have to make new friends and meet new people. So it's easy for a person like myself, who never really went to a church, to think of leaving your religion as similar to just moving. But the only reason we're able to equate those two things is because we've never belonged to a religious community. That's genuinely different. I mean, obviously, it varies from community to community. But generally speaking, you're grouping yourself with like-minded people, not just people who embrace the same branch of the Jesus super fandom as you, but people who embrace the same church. Okay, that generally means people that share not just your views of religion, but also morality and politics and all kinds of other shit, too. So going to a church isn't like, you know, just going to a barbecue with a bunch of your friends. For most of us, that would mean introducing a hell of a lot more difference in opinion that you'd get your average religious congregation. And again, for somebody who's never experienced that, it might not seem like that's going to make much of a difference. But I think it does. I, I found myself really reflecting on that when I got to thinking about how much I miss going to atheist conventions. You know, for the last half dozen years, I've hit at least a couple of these a year. And even before I started this podcast, I, I got to them as often as I could. Those are the only places I've ever been able to fully be myself without the risk of pissing everybody off. It's the only place other than this studio where I don't feel like I have to pretend to be someone else, at least to some degree. Now, as far as atheists go, I'm actually very lucky in that regard. You, due to the live shows that we do and the fact that conferences often invite us. I've been able to get that feeling six, eight times a year for quite a while now, but most atheists are lucky to experience that feeling even once a year. Many of us never get to experience that feeling at all. And yet, when we ask religious people to experience the same thing for a few months to keep their communities alive, they fight it all the way to the fucking Supreme Court and ignore the courts when things don't go their way. They defy, deny, or decry every proclamation that asks them to sacrifice anything at all. And the whole time, all we're asking them to do is temporarily share in the shit that we experience every fucking day. Look, I don't want to put too fine a point on it, but let's be honest, I don't know if I can at this point. This is literally a matter of life and death. And if they're not willing to forego the intoxication of camaraderie for a few months to save lives, what else are they willing to kill us over?